I'm on the rocky road Heading down off the mountain slope And there's my steps echo Just get started with some background questions. Just sort of wondering uh, what you studied, who you may have studied under. Okay, um, I did medicine at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. Finished medicine in '76. I uh, did my specialty in gastroenterology at St Vincent's Hospital. Did some tropical gastroenterology in the Solomon Islands for one year, and then uh, worked at the Garvin Institute of Medical Research. For, did my uh, uh, doctorate in. Um, gut motility and neurotransmitters. And then went to Mayo Clinic, spent three years there with Sid Phillips and all the crowd, and did more motility work, um, uh, described the migrating motor complex, that's too much detail I suspect, and came back and set up a clinic here. And uh, in Sydney we set up the clinic in 1984 and have been here for 24 years practicing gastroenterology. Uh, when did you first become aware of MAP and its association with Crohn's disease? Well, I came across mycobacteria in my medical course and learned what everybody else does, but did not have any idea of its significance until I was struggling with um, with people who had terrible Crohn's disease, and we'll speak with, with another David soon, um, he's just standing by, uh, and started resurrecting the concept that infection may be the underlying cause of inflammation because wherever else you look infection underlies inflammation and after developing a, a therapy for helicobacter back in 84 now called triple therapy uh, we found that what we previously thought was an unknown cause of inflammation such as chronic gastritis or ulcers was actually caused by a chronic infection which we had overlooked and the same thing now applies to the map what was first described as a potential infection in by um, Dalziel back in 1913 and then confirmed by many others, uh, albeit it has been very difficult to culture the bacteria, it's now uh, quite clear that a large segment of Crohn's is caused by MAP. So not all? Well probably not, um, simply because when you look at any infectious disease, such as duodenal ulcer, um, only about 93-94% depending on location of duodenal ulcers are caused by helicobacter. Uh, the other 5% is caused by 20 other causes. So there, there are no disease states that are all caused by a single single infective agent. And pneumonia for example has many different infective agents and it's still called pneumonia. Yeah. Uh, so then what, <clears throat> what convinced you to start researching that further once you came across the association? Well, it was actually John Herman Taylor who started me on this path because I heard on our science show here on the ABC that a patient had been treated for mycobacteria um, and I had the staff call the science show and there's like 12 different ABC stations around Australia. We finally found this girl in Melbourne who had been treated by John Herman Taylor. So I got on a plane, went to London and sat, spent a few days with him and watched um, watch his patients and it was a seeing was believing situation where he was treating uh, patients with two antibiotics for mycobacteria magen paratuberculosis and he is by far the expert in the world on MAP, its detection and treatment and it was inspiring and uh, came back to Sydney and I started realizing that we need to treat people for the infection and not just turn off the secondary effects of inflammation as we do with leprosy. We treat infection and inflammation. And so the first patient was Mr. David Fanari, identified in the movie. <laughs> He's standing by here. And so uh, Dr. Herman Taylor, he was using rifibutin and chlorothromycin? And chlorothromycin, yeah. Um, when did you first start treating treating some of your Crohn's disease patients? Uh, the first Mac? 12 patients, the 12 disciples, and David's here with us tonight, uh, it was 12, 12 and a half years ago, I think, about that. Um, at that time, what, what antibiotics were you using? We started using John Herman Taylor's uh, cocktail, um, but thinking about it practically, we realized, and I had trained in treating tuberculosis in Solomon Islands, where I had a large ward full of TB patients, and we realized that these bacteria uh, do not respond to two antibiotics. 
uh, in many situations we were using five. These are resistant bugs, the mycobacteria. So we thought at minimum when we'd have to use three antibiotics. And so we started searching and with John Herman Taylor's advice uh, we added clofazamine and many other patients had also had thambutol and sometimes we used metronidazole which also uh, kills dormant forms of mycobacteria and ciprofloxacin and levofloxacin. So the metronidazole might be an explanation as to why some, some doctors have seen uh, uh, good responses using that unknowingly. Sure. Well, that, that's a whole new topic that's just emerged. Uh, most of the drugs, except for, uh, for prednisone and most steroids, um, most of the drugs used in uh, treating Crohn's is actually targeting MAP, including uh, uh, tacrolimus, methotrexate, uh, all the 5-ASA compounds, um, azathioprine, 6 mecaptopurine, and of course all the antibiotics that we use. So the responses were not because we were turning off inflammation, but we were actually also killing or suppressing the growth of MAP. Mm. How uh, how have your patients responded to the anti-MAP therapy? Can I just add to go back where I first found out about it and what's, what's been the progress? We'll go to the clinical in a moment, but I think it should be uh, realized, especially by those physicians who, who know of, it, of chronic infections, that causality of disease is not proven by response to therapy. For example, the proof that tuberculosis, uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, is the cause of TB uh, was proven before any anti-TB agents become available in the 50s. And the criterion for proof of causality remains the gold standard, which is Cox postulates, more recently updated to Relman's postulates. And it was Robert Koch back in 1885 that proved that if you take a pure culture of sputum that contains mycobacterium tuberculosis and you culture it in the Lowenstein Jensen medium then infect animals with this and then produce the same disease and then find that the bug still in that animal and you culture it again then you have proven that its causality has been proven in fact and that's called Cox postulates. These have been refined somewhat but most diseases in which this can be applied derive their proof from Cox postulates and I think it should be known by more physicians and, and students who learn about this that Cox postulates have been satisfied for this disease. In other words, Chiodini actually did infect animals and grew back in culture from mesenteric lymph nodes uh, human mycobacteria that have been found in patients with Crohn's. So there is no question now of causality. Uh, that's only a question of those physicians who haven't read the papers. But the causality is proven. All we have a problem with is an adequate therapy and hopefully a cure. And you went uh, on to saying, how have patients done? Well, the overwhelming majority of patients, if you put love and effort into the therapy, will heal up the bowel with fine scars that we've never seen before with the therapies that we were taught to use by our mentors. So the overwhelming majority do well. In some situations, when you stop and start the treatment, you can develop resistance, I think, as you can do with any other infection, such as with tuberculosis. In fact, in the Solomons, about 20% of my patients had, uh, you could not stop the therapy because they, were, they had resistant strains. And that would be on five different drugs, including pyrazinamide, which WHO was su supplying for us then, and they still had their lungs decaying at times and, and coughing up bits of lung. So, there, were, there are lessons from other mycobacteria, including leprosy, mycobacterium avium, and mycobacterium tuberculosis, that we can apply to this same family of bugs. You will develop resistance if you stop and start or use lesser therapy than, than adequate, which we don't really understand. Yeah, yet. and the draw the conclusion that therapy didn't cure you is, is not any proof in one way or the other as to causality. I'm sorry, say that again? To, to draw the conclusion, like, uh, that was done after the uh, RCT, the randomized control trial in Australia, that uh, game over, that was just completely unfair. And oh, not, oh, no, not really. that's, that's just lack of vision and lack of scientific knowledge. Um, the conclusion that was uh, uh, in that paper uh, 